Cooler Master just came out with a brand new case. It is the TD300. It is the little brother to the TD500. Now this case is an MATX, which means it's a small form factor. So those of you looking for a perfect airflow case in a smaller size, this is a case to be considered. Now I'm gonna be talking about everything you need to know about the case, the goods, the bads, what I like and what I don't like. And we're also, of course, gonna be building inside of it. And later on, we'll get up close and personal and I'll give you all the cinematic goodness. So for joining for the first time, make sure to subscribe. And those of you coming back, hit the like button, drop a comment. It's good to see you again. Starting off with the external of this case, there's the diamond abstract front panel with the logo on the lower center portion of this case. Now this very front portion of this case is gonna be the most aggressive. You're not gonna see very much on it. Unlike the TD500, which the case actually has the actual angles of the front panel going to the side. This simply doesn't. And in my opinion, if we're being honest, it looks a whole lot better than the TD500. Up on top, you get both headphone and mic jacks, the reset switch, which also controls the RGB, but more on that later, and two USB slots. This entire portion is not connected to the front panel, which is good because you can yank the front panel off when doing any type of cleaning and not have to worry about ripping any of the wires out. And since this front panel only has one one layer of filtration, you're probably going to be taking it off quite a bit to clean all your dust. Now the side panel of the case has a very light tint to it, which in my opinion, I actually prefer once you have all the RGB lights and everything, you're able to just see it clearer and you're able to take some photos or some videos or anything like that if you want to be posting it on social media because we all know that we want everyone to see our PC. And to remove it is very simple, you just remove the two screws on the back side, slide and then pull. And as far as the back panel, there's nothing special about it. It removes the exact same way. It's just a sheet of metal. On top, you do get a magnetic dust filter, but to my surprise, the whole top panel comes off, which makes it a whole lot easier for you to be building in this case. Now, say that you have an AIO or you're having troubles connecting your CPU power supply cable to your motherboard, it's gonna basically make life a whole lot easier. Now, getting inside the case, you'll get an assortment of items which pertain to the case or help you better build in this case, like screws or zip ties and even drive holsters. Now you do get two fans, which are the Cooler Master Sickle Flow 120 fans. Now they're not super high end, but they are addressable RGB. And yes, there are only two, so you're going to be having to make a purchase for a third one for your exhaust. Built in and pre-installed to the case is an addressable RGB and PWM fan hub. And in this case, the reset switch is plugged in so you can control the RGB with the reset button. This hub allows you to connect up to five ARGB components with the two fans already pre-installed. The hub uses SATA power to power it, has an ARGB pass-through if you want to connect it to your motherboard and control the RGB that way, and a PWM connector to control fan speed from your motherboard if you choose to as well. As for the front panel, nothing out of the ordinary. You'll get the USB 3.2 connectors, the audio connector, and the stupid small HD LED, power LED, and power switch cables. As for the fan and radiator support, you can fit two 120 millimeter on the front outside, two 140 millimeter on the front outside, three 120 millimeter on the front inside, and either two 120 or 140 on top, and one 120 millimeter on the rear, which has greater Accessibility since it has large cutouts. For storage, you get a standard cage that can hold two 3.5 drives, but if you don't want that, just simply unscrew and remove it. In addition to that, you get four additional SSD mounts that are held by rubber grommets, two in the rear and two in the front. However, you only get enough rubber grommets to install two which I have no reason why, and I have no idea where to get them. In terms of the power supply, you get up to 140 millimeters to play with, and it even has some rubber feet support. Now, since this is an MITX case, it supports ITX and MITX motherboards. But equally important is the 344 maximum GPU length. And as you can see with our GPU, we have more than enough space. And for the neat freaks like me, there really isn't much for cable management. There's no raceways, there's no trails of any sort, but they do have eight tie down points where we can attach cables with some zip ties or any type of tie that you'd like to use. So now that we know everything we need to know about this case, let's build in it.
The motherboard that I went with was the B550M Ors Pro. The CPU was a Ryzen 5 6 core 12 thread processor, the 5600X, paired with the Zotac Gaming 3060. This is the Twin Edge OC edition. For RAM, I chose the Silicon Power 32 gigabytes at 3600 megahertz. For CPU cooling, I went with the Master Liquid PL240 Flux. And last but not least, we went with the Cooler Master V650 SFX Gold Power Supply. Sitting idle with the panels off, the CPU was a 29 degrees Celsius and the GPU was 35 degrees Celsius. And with the panels on, the CPU was 32 and the GPU was 37 degrees Celsius. And under load and stress with no panels, the CPU was 55 degrees Celsius and the GPU was 69 degrees Celsius. With the panels on, the CPU was at 59 degrees Celsius and the GPU was at 69 degrees Celsius. Now I have to say that this case was performing really great. Now the fact that when the case is open versus everything sealed, there really wasn't much of a difference which surprised me. So that means two things. My house is probably freezing or the case is just very well optimized. But nonetheless, this case is getting tons and tons of airflow. But a few things I wanna call out or just make known. I really love the way that the top panel removed. This was probably the easiest PC build to build in because of the case, because of that. I had actually messed up several times and I had to remove it mid build just so that I can redo what I messed up. But probably most annoying was just the fact that I wasn't able to do a clean cable management job in this case. I just had to stick where I can go. And I know this isn't a case issue, but the fact that I use Cooler Master fans with this and the cables were not long enough, it made everything a little bit more annoying. But does that ruin you from purchasing this PC case? Are you obsessed with cable management like I am or do you just put that side panel on and close your eyes, never look back. But as far as how it looked, at first I'm not into the gamery style or the abstract designs. I like really slick and minimalist, but the more I used this PC case and built in it, it rubbed off. The design isn't as bad as what I thought it would be. But to be honest, just the fact that how easy it was to build and how good airflow, I think that also played into a factor on my feelings for this case. But if you wanna see another PC build, make sure to check this video out right here. If you have any questions, comments, drop them down below. And of course, if you're not subscribed, do what you gotta do, subscribe, hit the notification bell, the like button, please, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.